Well, hello. It's been quite a long time. We can't fit many of these in. This is a retail job. We don't do many retail jobs. Jason 88900 base station. These are our, in effect, a converted European set, but officially converted, not a modification at this end. There's an E prom on a board there by the synthesizer. The synthesizer is a general purpose uh, Motorola, is it MC145156 or something like that? The problem is, the first thing we need to do, because these use a multiple crystal mixer to generate the frequencies, we need to make sure that the 10.24 um, crystal oscillator there for the synthesizer is spot on frequency using the trimmer capacitor just there. Because we can't set the frequency up before we've done that. The reason being, with it having a mixer, you've got the, if I get it the right way around, uh, you've got the receive one there, and you've got the transmit one there. So what we don't want to do is to end up with the receive being miles out one way and the transmit being miles out the other. So the first thing we need to do is do the 10.24. So, it's that crystal there, it's that trimmer there, it's pin 4 of the synthesizer IC, but you can't get to it because of this subboard. So what we've had to do is to take the bottom cover off, and I'll have to access it from this side of the radio. I won't be able to do that on video because it's a bit of a three-handed job. So I'll get back to you in a moment, and then we'll proceed with the transmit alignment. It's actually reading 10.239, so we'll just pull that up. Okay, so back with it, uh, now put back together. Couldn't bring it quite up to 10.24. Now, as so some of you will be aware, quartz crystals drop with age. I'll just zoom in onto that. So you've got the... Um, the crystal in question there and the tremor capacitor there to bring up the 10.24 um, frequency there onto pin 4 of the synthesizer IC which we've had to access from down below because of this uh, EEPROM. So we've got it to 10.3989 and that's as high as it's going to go. Now I'm sure the customer doesn't want us to all start ordering crystals and all that kind of thing and I'm sure that will be near enough. So what we're now going to do is get make sure the transmitter is actually on frequency. And we'll start, I'll just go into transmit, and we've got 2779133. Well, to be honest, I mean, that's spot on, isn't it? It should be 2779125, it's slightly high, but just uh, to prove I've got the right adjustments, it's capacitor 212, which is that one. That one there. Well, I thought it was. That's, but tell me it's that one. Yeah, I've got it the wrong way around. It's that one. So that's your transmit um, trim. That's the receive. So 2779127 now. That gives us a bit of latitude the frequency dropping with age. I'll just make a note on my sheet here that I was wrong previously. Now unusually on these radios, and I'm not going to go into the VCO but it's clearly going to be somewhere around there. We don't have the proper alignment instructions but what these radios have is on the front panel is a lock. I'll just to see if we can zoom in on that. Okay, so it's locked there. Now, as I change channel, I'll just zoom out again so we can just see the channel display and the um, lock indicator there. As we change channel, it momentarily goes out of lock, of course, between the channels. So this proves to us that the VCO is locked. Now, if that took several seconds to lock, then we know that the VCO needed realigning. So there we are, just gone 40, was there in a fraction of a second. Jump through to 1, was there in a fraction of a second. And as we go up to channel 20, quite clear that the radio is properly in lock, so we don't need to delve further into that. 
However, as I say, the VCO will clearly be that one there, but I don't know what the alignment procedure is. We'd have to work something out if we've got one of these with a phase lock loop problem. Back to the uh, transmitter on this. It's, uh, what's it doing? Let's have a look. It is doing how many watts? Um, it's doing exactly three watts. And I've said many times before, this is a commercial test set and um, it is true reading watts and you, you tend to find a lot of um, cheaper power meters can be very wild in their um, readings. So a lot of the time when this says three and a half watts, it's probably four and a half watts. Right, um, here we go. I just found the trimming tool. The first transmit adjustment is this one here. So I'm just going to peak that. Now that's a bit hot, uh, a bit tight. It's these are waxed, so we're just going to put the soldering iron on, and just um, slacken off the wax in that uh, in that coil because we don't want to break it. Especially with it being a customer's repair. Chap's name's Thomas. We don't do many retail jobs. Um, probably about two a year. Um, we normally deal with the trade. And the reason being, I like to have sets in batches. You know, we get twenty of one type of set in. And then you can get through them quite quickly. The other snag is this business is only secondary to our church pipe organ restoration business. And I'm having to get this set out of the way because it's got a huge organ job on and uh, it's going to take months so we won't be doing anything with CB radios and the regular customers have been told that. I need to get this out of the way or we'll be ending up it being another nine months or something. So we start that job in about three weeks so it gets all these kind of things out of the way. So I'm just going to warm that up a little bit. Let's see if we can move it now. The answer is yes. And that is now peaked. Move on to the next one. Again, that is peaked. When we had a similar setting, these ones down here were well out of... Um, the way the shield plate was made them really difficult to find. So I don't know whether this one's any better. That one's all right, but we're just going to have to um, again melt the uh, the wax somewhat. Right, I know that now it's slack enough to move. I can't even feel that one. I really hope it isn't broken by some service uh, in the past. Should be the right tool, but we'll just try the smaller one. And I'm going to have to look into that. I'll just pause the video. Okay, so we've set up the transmitter. It's uh, doing 4 watts now. So that was done with the first one there, the second one there, third one there, the fourth one there. And uh, one of the snags was, uh, that's very, um, you've got to be very careful with that because you can end up with it uh, not transmitting on, say, the low end and then perfectly on the upper end or conversely, not transmitting on the upper end of the channels and, and perfectly on the lower. So it has to be balanced quite carefully. So that uh, covers that. So now we will move on to the um, signal meter. Now because we've um, got a bit more power out than this was doing, that's now swinging right across. Having said that, we better put it on channel 20, so we're in the center of the band. So we need to now set that to be reading four watts on the RF meter. And it is the second preset according to my uh, sheet here. So we've got a row of presets here, I'll just zoom in on those, and it's the second one in for, for the transmit meter, the second one up. That's what I previously found when we had similar models in, so let's see what happens. So if I get my tool into there, go into transmit and we should be able to bring that down to read 4. And it does. There we go. 
Now these radios have got variable power, believe it or not. We're on the dummy load, of course, onto the test set. And um, TX power is this knob here. So if we press power, there's a power switch somewhere, that one, it now becomes variable from, what does that say? Well, I'll tell you what my test set says. Um, it says, we're looking at 0 0.6 of a watt there. See, it reads just about one on the meter. It's 0 0.6 on the test set to the full four watts. So that's quite nifty, and it's not something you often get on a CB radio. So we'll go out of that mode. Tell me which one I pressed that one. There we go. So the next thing to do is the deviation. So I will just pause the video and we'll get our little uh, oscillator and we'll see what deviation it's doing. So I'm going to transmit and we'll see what that's reading. Pretty low, it should be 2.5 peaking at its uh, 1.4. That would be typical as to how they come out of the factory. Now according to my sheet which I made up last time I did one of these, it's the you've got another clump of presets and it's the bottom one of those clumps for deviation uh, let's see if we can bring it up well, it's actually on full so with that modification that's as high as it goes what we will do is the whistle test I did bring it up a, just the merest fraction <whistles> wallow <whistles> well that merest fraction has made all the difference that's now developing a full two and a half. I don't like to do a whistle test. I do prefer to use the oscillator. We'll just go back to that. Actually, it's now doing two and a half on that, so uh, we've cracked it. You need repeatability. So I'll just listen on the monitor receiver. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three. So, yeah, we've got audio there, so that's great. So that concludes the transmit on the Jason 88900 and then we'll move on to the receiver.